Nine years ago today, Matt Straup received the following email. Subject line, Audrey got stuck. Message, Audrey's head got stuck behind the garbage disposal at my parents' house. This was the best pic I could get while laughing. Matt, how was the picture? Uh, you know what? Uh, phones have improved a lot in the last nine years. I looked at the picture. It's not great. It's, really? It's not great. Yeah. But it does depict a head apparently stuck behind a garbage disposal. So in that sense, it's pretty good. You were not there for this. I was not there. No. Um, I was out of town. Uh, it, if I recall, she was stuck for quite a while. Really? Well, yeah. What confused me is like, if you can get in, you can get out, right? Like, how do you get stuck? The garbage disposal didn't move, I don't think. And am I saying disposal weird? Like, I feel like I'm saying it weird. I, it sounds fine to me. Okay, good. Um, and this message was sent by? Uh, my then girlfriend, now my wife. Oh, congratulations. Yes, thank you very much. Uh, okay. Uh, <laughs> six years ago today, Nicole Dressbell sent the following email. Hey, nerd. I just got a reservation to a free wine and cheese pairing downtown near work at 7 tonight. You down? Was Nicole, was this a first date or what was what were the circumstances here? No, I think we were together two two of eight years. Two of eight years. Eight plus eight ongoing. And how this, this is also uh my then boyfriend and my still boyfriend. No, congratulations. <laughs> my then boyfriend, now boyfriend. Congratulations. Was was that a a wine and cheese pairing? Is that what we call it or do we call it a wine and cheese party? I don't know. It was like a bar that just opened. Okay, gotcha. Because a pairing feels very quick. Like we're going to pair these two and then we're out. I think that's what it was. Oh, I think wow. it was. I think we lost, walked into this new bar and it was like fight for tiny food and then leave. <laughs> gotcha. Did you get any of it, do you recall? Yes. Good. We did. Well done. We never went back. Welcome to Inbox, the show where we gain access to our guests' digital correspondence and mine their personal lives for Comedy Gold. I am Matt Straub. And I'm Nicole Dressbell. And our guest today is Peter Shear. Hi, guys. I promised to say writer Peter Shear, but I just said Peter Shear. That's okay. You've I amended it properly. You've amended it. Yes. I'm most importantly a guest right now. Yes. So That's true. But you are going to be a writer very soon. In fact, immediately. I'm already terrified. (laughs) We're jumping right in. uh, Right in with the most important segment to open up with. uh, Email roulette. Email roulette. Oh, no. So, Peter, we gave you homework before you came in Mm -hmm. to think about a person you don't want to send an email to. Mm -hmm. Will you tell us, without uh, without too much identifying information, who is this person? I... I'm now regretting immediately the person that I picked. Okay, well. Uh, but it's almost like you have to. This one is a little bit of a story, if that's okay. Please. It's very okay. Um, so in my early 20s, I was dating somebody, and it ended not great. It mm-hmm. was over. But I felt like I was right. Like, I didn't do anything wrong, uh, and she broke up with me and ended it. Okay. Well, just so you know, breakups are not a punishment. Sometimes people just don't belong together. Um, she s- said it was my fault. Really? Yeah. She okay. And she uh, said um, she loved me, and then a few days later was like, "He's being too clingy." Oh wow! So wow, because it's almost like the "I love you" kind of frees you up to be a little extra clingy. You know what I mean? Yeah, and it's I like license. Strongly and, agree. And I. This was very early on. So, how long? It was like less than two months. I mean, I would call that a mixed message, personally. Right? Sure. That's confusing. I'm, I'm stuck on what can you describe some clingy behaviors? Well, it would be a lot of like, let's hang out. What are you doing? And then. That's you being clingy? No, no. Oh, oh I see. I, there was no, there was no citation. It was just like citations. Once again, Peter, a uh, breakup is not a punishment. It's just something that <laughs> I've read happens. The book. I've read the book about relationships. The um, book? The, there's one book. What book? It's, uh, it doesn't have a name. It's just like an old, like a uh, dusty brown. Huh. Book. Oh, the, the DMV yeah. puts out? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Okay. Okay. We have to figure out. Okay. Oh, so, so this was the mistake that I did. Yes. So the I, mistake that you did, not that made the mistake that you did. This is, uh, yeah. Okay. I made a, this is one of my biggest like 
personal failures, I think. Thank you. Which was a year afterwards, she sent me an email apologizing, saying, I'm sorry this went well. And I was on the train and I was feeling really good about myself. And I wrote like that response you always want to send. The one that's just like, you were, you were wrong. You were bad. Oh, da, 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 da. wow. Really in the heat of the moment just did yes. it. And of course, because I was on the train, I didn't have any service. So I didn't send it. And I sent it to drafts. And so I wrote a nice, thoughtful, of uh, course, this is how relationships go. Uh, like or whatever, you know, I sound like a robot now when I'm talking about it, but I hopefully was very thoughtful. And I sent that one very nice and sweet. I hope you have a nice life, whatever. I sent both of them. <laughs> <laughs> Wait. But so accidentally sent the I other accidentally one. Accidentally sent both of them. I went into drafts to delete the 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 nasty one, and I sent that one. This feels only fair though, because you were told I love you and you're clingy at the same time. So yes. you sent like a loving message and like a nasty one. At but the same I sort time. of, I mean, my oh my, my gosh. personal opinion is like when when a relationship is over, like you just kind of move on emotionally from it. Like you you don't want to hold resentment against somebody. Like I wasn't at that point mad at her, but I for some reason was like 23 and was like, uh -huh. yeah, I'm going to like, I'm right. I'm going to, so. What a bananas peek into your brain she got by getting both of these emails. I, I know. And I like, I, I will say this because the, I know what the follow-up question is. Do I have these emails? The, I, like, those are the only emails I've ever deleted without looking at. Like I knew they would be in my inbox and I would just be too afraid. That's the biggest mistake you've ever made in your life. Wait, so well, now, I mean, I didn't know how, like that I would still try and be doing comedy. Here's the big question. Did you ever hear back? No. Great. Now I know what the email <laughs> is. Open up. I have a, I have a subject line, just proposal. Oh, no. Please. Just following up. Yes. App a hundred percent. One hundred percent. I hate that I am the one typing this. Okay. Uh-huh. Great. Uh, dear... Uh -huh. Write their name. Mm -hmm. No, no, no. Write their name. <laughs> yeah, we're not going to say it. You're going to write it. Oh, it's a great name. Ugh. Okay. Uh, didn't want to rush you. <laughs> no. But was wondering <laughs> if you got either, ideally both, you need to put in those commas. Great. Well done. Well done. Of the emails I sent. How many years ago? Uh, uh, seven years ago. Seven years ago. Uh, sorry. Can you actually write APPX period? Seven years ago. <laughs> APPX in all caps. I wrote in all caps. Very aggressive. Oh, no. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go down another space. Okay. okay. Great. Uh. Matt, do you have anything? I can keep. I can go all day. No, I'm just thinking about. No, keep going. I'm, I'm dialing up an idea here. Okay, great. Uh, would love to know your thoughts. <laughs> Sp yeah, specifically on email number two, and don't specify which one that is. <laughs> yes, great. Specifically on email number two, and which one you think is the real me? Okay, um, I'm going to. Wait, I'm gonna, okay. uh, can we? Furthermore, <laughs> thank you. Would love just a bit of clarification on the whole clingy thing. Oh, he's so right. He's so right on. Matt, really good work. I listened to a whole podcast about Russian you don't, there torture are no today. Other po there are no other podcasts? Uh, Russian torture today, and it, this is what this is. <laughs> Great. Uh-huh. Did we say thingy? The, 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 whole clingy, clingy, the whole clingy thing. Thing. Clingy yeah, thing. Clingy. Sorry. Yeah. Feels like we should close with the warmest regards, but I don't know if that's... Just regards. Just regards. Yes. Just. 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 Regards. <laughs> exactly. The words just. Just, just regards. Regards. So we've, is this a new sign-off that we've created? Great. And you just keep that in draft yes, so. and move away from that window. So we will find out later on whether you have to send that or not. Yes. I really, Peter, because uh, you're a nice boy and we like you. I'm not making you write her name in the field yet. Oh, I, yeah, well, you also are bad at saving emails and drafts, so we maybe shouldn't even have this in drafts. Well, apparently your draft emails just get out into the world. I've become very like anal about my inbox, and I, I'm sure it has at least something to do with that. Like, I only have 
Wow, yeah, this is impressive. Three drafts, and I'm sure other than this one, there's nothing in it. Um, and I left this, my, my like inbox messy, my mm-hmm. primary inbox messy to show like, but. Wait, this you is You also messy. only have three emails in drafts right now, and I notice a very neat inbox. This is beautiful. Yeah, I got to say. This is very messy for me. Um, I, someone, I read this somewhere. I don't know if it was a life hack, but it's become the way that I've operated. Every inbox or every email that I have in my inbox is something that I have to remember to do. Mm-hmm. And then I just will get rid of it when I do it. So I'm I- pretty sure this is me. Oh, really? This, cause that's exactly what I do. Yeah. Because I used to make lists over and over again, but I was like, oh, why do that? Uh, cause it then forces me just to like respond to the email. So you have 14 mm-hmm. things to do. I try to use this same approach. Peter doesn't even have 14 things to do because one of those emails is from me. Yes. Okay. Well, I'm doing it right now. I get to delete it after this meeting. I try to use the same approach mm-hmm. also, but mine's at like 280. Oof. So, well, you're a dad. Yeah. It's a lot of dad stuff. That doesn't stress you to see that number? Oh, no, it does, but I can't. I have like 200 is as low as I can get it. Oh. Wait. Can't. Hold on. Do you mean you have 200 unread or you just have 200 unarchived? No, I have about 12 unread right now. Okay. 200 something unarchived. That's fair. And some of them are like eight years old, probably down at the bottom. But you know what's in the unread ones? Like, you know who they're from or you just like have skimmed by I know. Them. I just can't bring myself to click on them. It's just, do you know, how, like sometimes mm-hmm. there's, I just can't do it. Sure. I hey. Think. It's like American Express. I can't click on that one. Speaking of yeah. down at the bottom, I would love Peter to go all the way, way, way back into your Gmail and find out the very first email you sent or received. Oh, no. The bottom of the box. Okay. Peter, this is the oldest email you have in your uh, mailbox, and this is an email you sent. I did, yes. On June 1st, 2008. Would you like me to read it? I would love for you to read it. Please leave out I, the identifying information. I don't even remember who this person is. Great. Um, well, we're going to try to crack this. Read the email. Here we go. Fred. Oh, sorry. The subject is lifeguard names. <laughs> Fred. Here are the names of two lifeguards I've worked with and should be available next week. Maeve and Bobby. If you can't find anyone, I would be happy to help out from 10 to 1. Hope this helps. Now, you probably have a lot of questions, but I also have a lot of questions. <laughs> so your first question is, was I actually a lifeguard? You don't recall whether you were? I was, yes. Okay. I was a lifeguard. Okay. Uh, Do you remember Maeve and Bobby at least? I remember Bobby. Wow. Ouch. Well, and I will also say we didn't read last names here, but only Bobby has a last name in the email. I think it was somebody who was looking for more work who I was like, oh, I can help out. Right. Like, I'll try and give it. But you didn't even <laughs> yeah. know Maeve well enough to write her last name at the time. Look, I lifeguarded in uh, high school and college. And the 98% of the lifeguards would sleep while they were there. Right. Um, they were completely terrible. Um I, I would be so stressed out as the only awake lifeguard sitting at the pool that anybody with some like minor competence, you'd be like, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Here's their name. Give them the money. Did you end up filling in that day from 10 to 1? I I think we can figure out if I did. But, but I, I, I have really? one more thought on it before we go there. I also, I would just love to know if you know who Fred is. Do you remember Fred? I think, I think it was um, for a private event. So oh. like... They would email, uh, if people had parties at their houses or something, they would email the local pool looking for lifeguards. So responsible. Yes. When I saw the subject line lifeguard names, I was kind of hoping this was a brainstorm of what like lifeguard characters could be named. I thought, story. I thought so too. Yeah. As if lifeguards need specific, like there's a specific style of name for a lifeguard. Well, I feel like Lance is a great lifeguard name. Lance, yeah. Lots of bobbies. I feel yeah. like there are a lot of bobbies. Um, but this was. June 2008, and I had just graduated from school, and I was home for the summer. So I was, like, sort of lifeguarding before I moved to New York. Can you, sorry, can you please, please read the email? I don't know what you're looking at right now. Peter has opened up a document. He's being very selfish with his email, which directly contradicts what the show is. I've spent my life trying to get better at comedy writing. Okay, and so what is this very funny email that you've sent to someone? Uh, So it looks like this is a sketch that... Either I have written or someone on my improv team has written, uh, and I have because I have no original thought of my own at this point. Uh, oh, 
I know what this is. It's a line from Team America. Oh, no. Uh, and this, so listen, this is an intentionally bad sketch that I'm remembering because it's September post-college and I'm missing my friend. So I, I'm sending him an old bad sketch that we wrote. And I think because I say, I miss you. The line is, I miss you more than Michael Bay missed the mark when he made Pearl Harbor, which was a song that I loved less than 10 years ago. <laughs> um, uh, and so I think I was like, hey, remember? So you quoted somebody else's comedy to send a comedy friend a bad comedy sketch that you wrote. Yeah, I, I already had many layers at that point. Okay, I would, I would argue just one layer wrapped around <laughs> again and again and again. Ugh. Hello, Nicole Marie Dressbell speaking. Mask who's calling? Hey, oh, hey, uh, it's Matt. That was su super formal. I'm trying to be more formal. Oh, uh, cool. Well, hey, I got a question for you. Okay, what's your question? All right, when I say Dollar Shave Club, what's the first thing that pops into your head? Uh, amazing affordable shave. Wow, yes. Okay, I'm about to blow your mind. Are you ready for this? Yes. DollarShaveClub.com delivers everything you need to look, feel, and smell your best. We're talking shampoo, body wash, toothpaste, and, of course, the best razors I've ever used. I get an amazing, high-quality shave every morning from the Dollar Shave Club Executive Razor. But the true hero of any morning routine is their Dr. Carver's Shea Butter. It helps the razor gently glide across your skin. You just have to experience it. That does sound—I mean, Matt, I was obviously primed to think this stuff is incredible because I knew Dollar Shave Club is synonymous with amazing, affordable shave, and you've still blown my mind. And I'll actually add to this— Another must-have aspect of the experience is how Dollar Shave Club delivers everything to you. That means no more trips to the store, wandering the aisles, hunting for razors, shampoo, toothpaste, and then having to play at being a cashier, scanning and backing your stuff. That's, it's awful, Matt. I mean, I've wandered, I've gotten lost in so many drugstores. I've lost hours of my life. I mean, Matt, how much time of your life do you think you've spent in, in drugstores? Days. Yeah. Days. I'm going to say days at this point. At a time. And in aggregate. Yeah, that's right. Drugstores are confusing. You don't need to, to make like 10 stops. This just makes the whole thing much easier. Yeah, 10 stops at 10 different drugstores for 10 different items. <laughs> for a mind-blowing experience, join Dollar Shave Club today. And for just $5 with free shipping, you'll get the six-blade executive razor plus trial sizes of shave butter, body cleanser, and one-wipe Charlie's. Then keep the blades coming for a few bucks more a month. Get yours at dollarshaveclub.com slash inbox. That's dollarshaveclub.com slash inbox. We're now going to reenact a chat from your G chat history, Peter. This is you and a friend of yours. Mm -hmm. Okay. The role of Peter will be played by Nicole. The role of Francis will be played by me. Ready? Hi, Francis. Hi, handsome. Squished smiley face. I wish that something in my brain wasn't politics, but that's all that's in there now. Well, it's a all-consuming shit show. Is this the singularity? I hate that it's taking so long to bring him down. There's so much. Too much. How are you doing? All right. At the Yankee game. Rain delay. Ha! Scene. I shouldn't clap for us. <laughs> I clapped for us. I should have clapped for you, but I'm more embarrassed right. by my level of communication skills. I'm just sure. picturing Francis kind of doused in the rain, just kind of sitting out there, you know. During the rain delay, just soaked. Just, I mean, I was so grateful that he would take out his phone just to see what I had to talk about. And I literally had nothing to say to him. And he was like, yeah, you know, <laughs> I would watch a three-act play about that. That's friendship. Okay, parent time. Peter? We asked you to uh, provide us with an email exchange between yourself and a parental unit or a guardian figure. Parental units. Okay, Peter, so the email you pulled is actually from a Patriarch. Yeah, my, this is from my grandfather. Okay, and now I'm looking at this email and I see a lovely subject line which says, what a great family, exclamation, <laughs> two exclamation points. And yes. then I see your grandfather's name, mm -hmm. a list of recipients, and just a lot of white space. A lot of white space. And you would think, oh, I'm going to scroll down to see what the message is. But you can't scroll down. In which direction must you scroll to see the message? Okay. You have to scroll sideways. A hard which is right. a, a very... I would uh, say two pages worth of scrolling sideways. Yes. Which I did not even know that this was an email function. And in 
A very large font. Yeah. Large uh, cranberry red font. Like, cranberry a, red like font. a 36 point probably. It says, Merry Christmas, no punctuation. Stop it. Stop it. You're having a, it. Oh, my gosh. And then oh, you, my gosh. And that's the end of the email. So it is. So in writing this email, it is 36 point font and then probably 100 spaces. Uh huh. And then Merry Christmas. Yeah. Yes. And then I would say a good 100 it's spaces on the other side. Distant on both sides, I'd say. Yeah. I've never seen a side scrolling email that was not for like an image reason or because of formatting. <laughs> Peter, this is truly you know, absolute, he's my, my grandfather is wonderful and he still sends like the forward chain emails. Sure. Like the forward forward, like this dog saved this family from this lake. Um, what? I, Stop. I, I don't, what did the lake do? The I, the lake was extra wet or something. I don't know why people the whole family's drowned in lakes. Um, my favorite thing about this email in particular is that everybody in the family then replied to it. Oh great, it gets better. Every replied to it, and every time you reply, you just see "Merry Christmas" again. Yeah, underneath it, it keeps pulling that that red "Merry Christmas." And yep. then uh, another family member of mine sent a photo of of the Very large. the family that was together, part of the family that was together. But it is the biggest photo I have ever seen. Oh, I wonder if the photo is the photo responsible for what's happening with Merry Christmas. Maybe it's the same width as the photo. Yeah. So is the photo? What have, have we been unfairly? We have maligning yes. Grandpa. We've been mean to my grandfather, right. and we should be just mad at formatting in Gmail or that giant image. I want to blame the image. Yeah, I'd like to do that. I mean, Peter, I'm looking at this image, and I'm there. <laughs> yeah. I'm looking at so full big. screen right now, and I'm only seeing snow. On the ground. Snow on the ground. Also, can you scroll up? Yeah. The feet are enormous. Scroll up. Dad's brother? Yeah. Totally. Yeah. Totally see it. Uh, I'm friends with Peter. Maybe I should have said that at the beginning of the podcast. Yes, hi. Hi. I, I was trying to be uh, very formal. I wasn't going to talk about it, and I don't know why, as if people... As if the integrity of the podcast is predicated on a- us any, not knowing any you. sort of chemistry that we have. Let's not have any of it. By the way, okay. this... do we do we have chemistry? No, I like that. Like as friends, friends can have no. Okay, no, they can. They can. I think they can. I think friends can have chemistry. Yeah, yeah. But this image, which is like oh, so a good six, it was the image. sixteen inches by sixteen inches, right? At least it's a very small uh, cat words to the lower left of the image. She almost won't see. Unless you really look, because the image is so big. Wow. Merry Christmas to both of you. Just hidden there, because the image is so just dwarfs the words. And then Grandpa does send an email that is perfectly normal formatting. So, yeah, big we're font. blaming. Pretty big font. And though. here comes another big picture. Just, uh, this picture features more family members, but still, real big picture. Just a bookcase. Mm-hmm. Oh, now I'm just looking we're at. looking at food. Just, just food. the plate. Oop, another oh, big my. picture. That's bigger. Those heads are bigger. Oh, can, Peter, what can I have a pet this? peeve? Can I have a pet peeve? That is I it have? giant pictures? Other than the giant size of it, is they've made my entire extended family post for this photo. And if you look, the food hasn't been touched yet. So they're making people take this photo. Sure. And the, everyone's hungry because no that, one's had those crab cakes. That's a better there, picture. Look like crab cakes. Well, it looks like crab cakes. That's a night. That's a good plate. That's a fancy this Christmas. This is fancy. Like a vegetable medley there and some. Wild rice looks like maybe the shears really go for it. It's time for fun with refunds. Fun with refunds. Peter, we've gotten pretty deep into your inner life. Uh, we'd love to know a little bit more about your consumer habits. So uh, you've done a search for the word refund going way, way, way back in your email. And I see one of the first things that came up was a confirmation of computer based exam. And this is a receipt for the GREs, which I've known you a long time. I did not know you took the GREs. I honestly, in this moment, don't know if I went in for this test or not. I remember, I remember having books for the GRE, having done some preliminary studying for it. This, I, I don't know what program I was applying to. Stop. I, I think that I thought uh, I should take the GRE and go to grad school, but I hadn't figured out what it was yet. If you took the GREs, would there would you have a record of it to your email? Is that something that happens? This is, yeah, and this, we should say, is a confirmation of an appointment to take. Yes. You yes. were all set to go. Uh, yes. We're, we're going to get to the bottom of this. You're going to start with just uh, GRE results and see if anything comes up. <laughs> I feel like you would remember if you'd taken them. 
Oh, I was applying to uh, advertising school, but it didn't happen. What is advertising yeah, that's a, school? That sounds made up. That's yeah, not it real? is made up, and that's why I didn't go to it. Wait, it, you mean advertising school didn't happen? Not just you going didn't happen, but advertising school went away? Well, it, it still exists. Okay. So they're like portfolio schools, which are scams. It sounds like a real racket. It's a racket. And the, but they, it's a scam that requires you to take the GRE? There, then there are then there are like actual graduate programs, and there's one that you get an actual some sort of like masters. Why would you do that? Huh. I don't know. So, no, sorry. And I want to make it really clear so people listening don't think I'm judgmental. I'm not saying why would one do that. I'm saying why would you do that? Because in my you were still so young. How I old were you? To be, uh, this was. It was two years after college. It was like a year after college. So what are you doing? What do you, you have hopes? You have dreams? You're living in New York City? You're looking to write? You know, you do get that temptation to go back to school when you don't know exactly what to do yeah, sometime in your 20s. Yeah, for fun things. <laughs> yeah. You go back for fun things. Nobody's like, I want to go to ad school. Well, I was like, okay, I'm working as a paralegal. What? Once, I worked as a paralegal even for six and a half years. That I knew. Oh, wait. This is Matt Straub. <laughs> yes. Yeah. He, oh, did you already talk? We talked off mic beforehand. Okay, sorry. Yes. <laughs> uh, anyway. I worked with his dad, and his dad was very cool, and he uh, didn't fire me, which uh, <laughs> maybe is, you know. Uh, yeah, Peter and I met one other time when my dad was at an improv show that we were both performing in, and my dad was in the audience, and it was like, wait a second, and it was this eureka moment. I so, totally so. forgot about this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Anyway. Um Yes. So you're working as paralegal. So it's not even like you were already in ads and you thought, oh, maybe I'll go the extra mile. It's like you were thinking about pursuing advertising. Yes. What it, was your undergrad? It, I was political science and English. But you okay. that seems like so you, you were, bailed. Uh, you were undecided I was, I and was undecided. Nothing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. My poli sci major was like, I really liked Sam Seaborn from the West Wing. Uh, and that was that's as far as that went. Right. We were trying to find dirt in your email. Like, as investigators, you would be like an amazing case to try to crack. Yeah, let's let's get real about this because sometimes we're doing things off mic and people might not know about it. Uh, Peter, you're squeaky clean. Yeah, this is it's, it's spooky. terrifying. <laughs> yeah, it's downright spooky. I I was so worried all day thinking about the dirt you would find and the things I'd be embarrassed no. about. And there is nothing, and I feel like a serial killer. Yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm strong, terrified of you. Well, strong. I'm actually okay, terrified so of here's you. here's the only thing I can say is that in well, I had an email in college, and that email went away when I graduated. So all of my like college mistakes and my stupid angsty things probably live in some server in Boston. Uh, but but my like moving to New York, <laughs> being an adult. So you you started Peter, a new life, is what you're saying, Peter? Unclench. I know. <laughs> I'm so. So like, you turned 22 and haven't let yourself yes, get sloppy. I have, that, I have the same briefcase over there that I've had. In, uh, no, there's no briefcase. Oh, no, there. it's just like, okay, it's a accidentally can. sent one draft is the only blemish I can find. <laughs> accidentally sent well, a draft of an email once. So maybe it's time to create some new blemishes. <laughs> Peter, you have a trivia question to answer. Okay. Okay, this is part two of email roulette. Now, Peter, you have to attempt to answer a trivia question correctly. If you answer it incorrectly, you will have to send that email that we composed earlier. You ready for this? I'm ready. Okay. The trivia question is, the popular chat service Slack was developed in what country? Was it A, India, B, Johannesburg, C, Canada, or D, Wales? Oh, God. <laughs> Please repeat those. Okay. I'll repeat. And here we go. The popular chat service Slack was developed in what country? A, India, B, Johannesburg, C, Canada, or D, Wales? And I want to say right off the top, we're here to try to help you. We don't know the answer off the top of our head. We, we haven't seen the answer. No. And we, we want to help. So, Nicole, do you have any thoughts on how we can whittle this down? Well, I just want to make sure, Peter, you're familiar with Slack. Uh, yes, that is a uh, group chat service. Yes. What's the second option? Well, right off the bat, Johannesburg is definitely not a country. You don't think so? Wait, what? Oh, right. It's definitely not a country. So we're good there. We can just strike that one. I feel great about that. I say very few things with total certainty in my life. That's a definite. It's, uh, it's out. B is out. Okay? It's done. So we got three, guys. That's the good news. All right? Oh. Great news for the group here. I knew that, but I was not prepared to process it. You, yeah. You, yeah. I would have probably guessed that 
Uh, so this is okay. good. Good. So here we go. We're left right. with A, India, C, Canada, D, Wales. Okay. Is Slack named after something? And Probably. Is that thing that it's named after part of the country? What do you, what like, do you think that's going to get you? Yeah. I have no idea what the correct answer is. And I'm Slack Town, Canada. Grasping no, I don't, I don't. for straws. Yeah. Okay. So um, what is your, what is your gut telling you here? My gut is telling me whales for the surprise factor. Yeah. That's, uh, and I'm leaning toward Canada. I got to be dead honest. Really? Canada yeah. feels right to me. Yeah. But it, that is a big country. It's sure, a, but so, India is also India's, a big country. India has a lot of people. Canada feels like the least likely to me. Well, my question is, do you need Slack to talk to people that you are far away from, like Canada? Or in India, where it's known to have a very large population, where there's a lot of people to sort through? Wait, are you saying Canada is a lot of light, like? Canada is people to land, so they yeah. don't need Slack. No, or, so they need so Slack they would more. Need Slack because they're That's like absurd. We can't all no, we can't all get together. Yeah. for our, our so. wine and cheese pairing. Sorry, did you? Th- <laughs> nice to back. be clear, this was not invented by the country. <laughs> yes, this was invented in okay, the country. Uh, this trivia question has some flaws. It does. Also, uh, Slack is like used in offices with people who are very close to each other. So the proximity of people or distance, I don't think, is a, is a consideration. Yeah, I would say okay. exceptionally irrelevant. Yes. Okay, so that did um, not help in any way. I right. Honestly, I, I, f- I, feel like, I feel like Wales is the only one I'm feeling like we could rule out. Really? You're ruling out Wales? Yes, and okay. we're in a quantum Also, here. there are complicated things about Wales and identity and country and all of that. So I guess that's fair. I, I want to reiterate that sending this email will spiral my life out of control in a Breaking Bad sort of situation. I personally feel like, and if I've lived the last 10 years of my life squeaky clean, this, uh, I, I will like, will not, if I pick whales and it's wrong, I will n- not go there ever. So with, with, with all the marbles on the table here, where are you going to go, Peter? I mean, we know the stakes. I mean, we've basically narrowed it down to a 50, 50 for you. Yeah. So, if we're accepting that Wales is off the table. It's either Canada mm-hmm. or India. Yes. Or in an extreme long shot, Johannesburg. <laughs> I will say, if you're, you're a trivia question writer, you're like, you look at the information and you're like, oh, this could be a cool thing. You're not like, oh, Slack was made in Canada. That seems like a great place to build a trivia question. No, I think, can I be honest with you? Yeah. We don't come up with the trivia questions, but I'm guessing it was like, oh, what's a thing yeah. that's sort of techy Slack is? Let me look up something about Slack. So I don't think we're leading with answer. I think we're leading with question. Hmm. Yeah. I am I am putting India on the uh, motion for India. What Do you just mean you're picking India? No, I'm trying to see how you guys, if you, I, Yes. But no. that's all you've been doing the whole time. Okay. I, I choose India. Oh, <laughs> no. No. No, no. Oh, I'm going to feel bad. Oh, it's wrong, but you get one more try. Okay. Okay. We, we, all right. So do we think that we've chosen the other? The uh, correct 50-50? Yes. I got to be honest. Me ruling out Wales was wildly arbitrary. It, yeah. it just, I just did it. I right. just did it. You it know? Just seems I was to... confident after the Johannesburg thing, and I just went with Wales it. Wales seems weirder than Canada. Right. And so I'm going to choose Wales. Wow. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> We're just being told that is wrong. That was, wow. Oh, no. Is it? Wait, should we get the title? Is it Johannesburg? And no, the, no. the question itself was incorrect. <laughs> No. no. <laughs> oh, the answer was Canada. <laughs> oh. Oh boy. Oh. oh boy. Wow. And to think, I swear one of us said they were leaning toward Canada. I don't remember who it was, but it was, it no was one definitely remembers. not me. I was, I will, that was me. full India. I've been to Montreal, and that will be the last Canadian city I visit. <laughs> oh boy. Well. Okay. Well, Peter, uh, Peter you're you going to have to type that. Yeah. I mean, the thing is. Like, look at it this way. It's two email, big email screw-ups within how many years? I mean, that's a pretty good record. Yes. So if this is your second, 
And we finally like thrown a blem another blemish on your record. So I think this will be cleansing for you in a weird way. I this feels definitely like a changing point in my life. <laughs> okay. Should I CC you guys on it? I would be CC, Peter. Oh, don't, yeah. be, sure, sure, don't be sure. preposterous. Uh, okay. I don't think that I can physically push send. Okay. I think you guys have do you, to. Do why don't you like it's not really how it works so if we do it so why don't you Yeah, just move the like mouse for him. Just put well. your finger there. Yep, now you're at the ledge. Okay, okay. Great, and I'm just going to push your finger down, buddy. Okay. And just remember, we didn't do this, you did this. Oh uh, no. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, error. Oops, a server error occurred and your email was not sent, which Peter yes. Peter yes. No, 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 buddy. Remember, this oh, is no. what happened last time. <laughs> <laughs> Mail.